Hi. Master class members. I will discuss the hydrodissection technique in several clinical cases. I usually undergo hydrodissection perineural release in simple peripheral nerve entrapment cases. But I try to decompress the nerve or tendon by the direct retinaculum or ligament cutting procedure using the needle blade in chronic intractable nerve entrapment or tendon entrapment cases. Ultrasound guided hydrodissection is a minimally invasive technique used to release entrapped peripheral nerves by injecting fluid to separate the nerve from surrounding tissues. Here is a detailed step by step technique for performing this procedure. Patient positioning, position the patient comfortably, either supine or in a lateral decubitus position, depending on the location of the entrapped nerve. The affected area should be exposed, cleaned, and draped sterilely. Ultrasound machine setup, choose an appropriate high-frequency linear transducer for superficial nerves or a lower-frequency convex transducer for deeper nerves. Apply a sterile cover to the transducer and use sterile ultrasound gel. Scanning. Identify the entrapped nerve using the ultrasound. The nerve typically appears as a hypoechoic, round, or oval structure surrounded by hyperechoic connective tissue. Adjust the depth, gain, and focus settings for optimal visualization. Ergonomics. Ensure proper ergonomics by aligning your eye, hand, and the ultrasound monitor. Position the monitor on the same side as your needle hand allowing for easy visualization of both the needle and the monitor. Anesthesia, if necessary, administer local anesthesia to the skin and subcutaneous tissue overlying the entrapped nerve using a small gauge needle. Needle insertion, choose a small gauge needle for superficial nerves or a larger gauge needle for deeper nerves. Under real-time ultrasound guidance, insert the needle in plane or out of plane, depending on your preference and the patient's specific anatomy. Hydrodissection, using the ultrasound for guidance, advance the needle tip to the interface between the nerve and the surrounding tissue. Slowly inject a small amount of fluid to create a fluid plane between the nerve and the adjacent tissue. This technique will help separate and release the entrapped nerve. Monitor the fluid spread and adjust the needle position to ensure the fluid surrounds the nerve. Nerve assessment, after hydrodissection, assess the nerve's appearance and mobility using the ultrasound. If needed, inject additional fluid to separate the nerve from surrounding structures further. Completion. Once the nerve has been adequately released, remove the needle and clean the skin. Assess the patient's symptoms and provide post-procedure care instructions. Training for self-nerve mobilization at home, also known as nerve gliding or neural mobilization exercises, can be a helpful adjunct to treatment for individuals with a nerve entrapment or neuropathy. These exercises aim to restore normal nerve movement and alleviate symptoms. Follow-up, schedule a follow-up appointment to assess the patient's progress and determine if additional treatment is needed. The first case is the hydrodissection release of the deep radial nerve between the supinator muscle. The deep branch of the radial nerve, also known as the posterior interosseous nerve, can become entrapped within the supinator muscle or at the level of the arcade of froze, leading to radial tunnel syndrome or posterior interosseous nerve syndrome. Hydrodissection can be a useful technique to release the entrapped nerve. The supinator muscle is a broad muscle in the posterior compartment of the forearm that wraps around the radius. It plays a crucial role in supinating the forearm and turning the palm upward. The supinator muscle has two distinct parts, superficial and deep, which encircle the radius. The deep branch of the radial nerve passes between the superficial and deep muscle belly. The arcade of froze, also known as the supinator arch, is a fibrous arch within the supinator muscle. It is formed by the proximal edge of the deep part of the supinator muscle. The arcade of froze is an important anatomical landmark because the deep branch of the radial nerve passes beneath it. Therefore, Entrapment of the pin at the level of the arcade of froze can lead to radial tunnel syndrome or posterior interosseous nerve syndrome. 
The deep branch of the radial nerve runs obliquely in an anterior superior to the posterior inferior direction between the two muscle bellies of the supinator muscle. Here is a tip for a safe procedure. Identify the radial nerve as it passes anterior to the lateral epicondyl and courses deep into the forearm, entering the supinator muscle. Follow the radial nerve as it runs obliquely between the two muscle bellies of the supinator muscle. To perform hydrodissection, insert the needle more proximal to the expected nerve course under ultrasound guidance and then advance it toward the interfacial layer between the two muscle bellies. Slowly inject a small mixture of dextrose, dexamethasone, and local anesthetic to create a fluid plane between the nerve and the adjacent tissue, separating and releasing the entrapped nerve. I want to ensure that the pathology in this patient is in the middle of the supinator muscle, not in the froze arcade. Please don't understand. I would approach more proximal and medially if the pathology is in the froze arcade. And add more hydrodissection between the supinator muscle and the brachioradialis muscle. The second case is the simple hydrodissection release of the median nerve in carpal tunnel syndrome. Identifying the key landmarks of the carpal tunnel is important to correct the procedure. The following are the key landmarks for carpal tunnel. Wrist crease. The flexor crease of the wrist serves as an external reference point for the carpal tunnel location. Transverse carpal ligament. This fibrous band forms the roof of the carpal tunnel. Scaphoid and pisiform bones, these bones mark the inlet of the carpal tunnel. Hook of the hamate and trichotrum bones, these bones mark the outlet of the carpal tunnel. Under ultrasound guidance, insert the needle in plane, advancing it toward the carpal tunnel. I usually approach radial to on the side, proximal to distal obliquely, watching the scaphoid bone and hook of the hamate. For the simple hydrodissection, I infiltrate a mixture of fluid between the transverse carpal ligament and median nerve. But most likely, I perform this procedure before the transverse carpal ligament release using a 17-gauge needle blade. Position the patient comfortably, with the affected wrist resting on a table with soft support and palm facing upward. When the needle passes the transverse carpal ligament, I slowly inject a small amount of fluid into the space between the transverse carpal ligament and the median nerve. Thank you for watching. I will continue the hydrodissection technique for the ulnar nerve next. Stay tuned.